We are in Isaiah, and we have been through this all. Why did they stick that under there? Okay, here we go. All right, I need this. All right, so a couple announcements just to make you all aware of. VBS is happening now, as if you couldn't tell. Um, Wednesday night will be the gathering. We'll, gathering will have VBS in for v, Wednesday night is family night. That's when everybody's welcome. Show up here for worship, hear what the kids have done all week and all that sort of thing. Uh, this coming Saturday is going to be men's breakfast at 8 o'clock over in the fellowship hall, so we'll have all that good, delicious grease. Uh, and then Sunday morning, next Sunday morning, we're doing pancake breakfast fundraiser to uh, for the missions team going to Panama. They're going to be leaving next week. And so uh, pancakes will be served next Sunday morning from 8.30 to 10.30 over in the fellowship hall, suggested $7 donation kind of thing at noon next Sunday. Next Sunday at noon. We're going to do baptism over at the Beach Access number 13. Those being baptized just meet in the fellowship hall about 11.50 because uh, that's when the uh, right before we'll go across the street. But also, we're doing baptism today. I got a, a, a gentleman that I met some met a couple times uh, over last year. He wants to be baptized in the ocean, and so he's from, yes, ma'am? Oh, we're doing hamburgers, hot dogs, or whatever. Yeah, Wednesday night is family night. Meet here for the VBS worship time. And six is hot dogs and hamburgers. Okay? Is that it? And then come here. All right, so come eat a burger or a dog at six, and then come over here to the worship center. Yay! All right. I'm wearing my shirt. I'm good. And I even wore my boots again today. All right. We're going to do baptism today right at 1 o'clock. I got a, a gentleman and his uh, his son's actually a pastor up in Maryland going to help me baptize him today. So uh, that's going to be right at 1 o'clock today if y'all want to show up at the beach and, and watch us jump in the water. If y'all were here a couple of weeks ago when, when Bill and, and Ray back there got baptized, it was a tough ocean that day. But we all survived. And they said they had the video, and they it provided many laughs for them afterwards. So uh, we are we are getting ready for seasonal change. I don't know if y'all realize it, but around here we have to react to the seasons. And so the, right now we're in the middle of a really busy season, and we're just trying to uh, run the play so that we get to the end of the summertime. And then guess what? Kids and stuff, schools changes, and all that kind of stuff. So in September we start transitioning and moving some things around. And so. Uh, uh, I'm just saying that by way of two announcements. One is is that uh, we're gonna um, we got some ladies that have been working as part of the women's ministry, ladies' ministry team. We're gonna kind of refire that back up here in the days ahead. And then the Hello Team, which is gonna be like hospitality and greeting and parking and all that kind of stuff, just so we can let folks know we're glad they're here. Uh, by the way, we're glad you're here. Just wanted you to know that. So uh, God said it. We've been talking about God said it all year long. We are going from Genesis to Revelation from January to December. We're reading through the Bible together. Many are, are, are using the Bible, the Bible Project reading plan, which gives you three or four chapters a day as we read through the Bible. We are in Isaiah right now. Whatever passage falls on Sunday, that's what I preach. So today the chapters were somewhere in the 46, 45, 46, 47 range. And so today's passage for our text this morning comes from Isaiah 46. But remember last week when we started this, I said that there's two messages in Isaiah, all 66 books. There's two messages, judgment and comfort. Last week was judgment, and I gave people an opportunity to leave if they wanted to. Uh, but this week's comfort. I get to talk about comfort today. I get to talk about the promises of God today, so I'm excited about it. But when I say that the message is entitled, God said it, uh, here you go. Uh, God has spoken into time. When, when God said, let there be light, he spoke creation into existence. I said last week, if when he said, let there be light, uh, there was a, an explosive sound, okay, that's fine. But God said, do it, and it happened. Let there be light. Let there be trees, let there be pine trees, whatever. God spoke it all into existence. So when you look around you, you see uh, the spoken creation of God, the sanctuary of God's creation. This is the written word of God, all of it, not just parts of it, not just the parts we like or the parts, you know, we don't get to redact or edit any of it. This is the word of God. Uh, what we're called to do is read it. 
Pray for discernment and, and understanding and then to obey it, okay? And then we've got the living word of God, which is Jesus himself. And so uh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, glories of the only begotten of the Father. And we provided this little picture for you. Some of you have gotten one. And this is, a, this is the Bible in a page right here. Okay, I'm going to trip and fall down, and you have my permission to laugh. All right, Bible in a page. We've got creation over here. Then we've got sin in the fall. And, 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 and then we've got the couple, Abraham and Sarah, where God tells them, you know, through you all the nations are going to be blessed. And that's the covenant statement <clears throat> that, that out of Sarah and Abraham, we've got the family which become the people which become the nation. The nation asks for a king. God says, you really don't want a king, but you asked for one, so you can, there's the picture right there. That's what I'm holding up. Uh, so they got a king. Most of them were bad. Uh, today we're dealing with King Ahaz, and Isaiah's speaking to Ahaz through time. Uh, but, but what we've got here is, is the, the king of Israel always points to the king of kings of Israel, which is Jesus himself, which points to the body of Christ and our Savior. So ultimately, what we've got is this picture. So right now, we're still in the nation phase. We, we've come through the, uh, the exile time where they were hauled off into captivity into Babylon. Of course, the northern kingdom was previously had been hauled off into Assyria into captivity. But now, we have the nation having returned and Isaiah... I believe miraculously God has given Isaiah this opportunity to, to speak through time to the nation as they return from captivity. And so here is his message in Isaiah chapter 46, beginning in verse 8. He said, remember this and be brave. Take it to heart, you transgressors. <laughs> How about that? I mean, he's telling them they're coming back from captivity. He's already telling them, look, you already are transgressors. Now, many of them, I mean, it was 70 years of captivity in Babylon, but God's already saying, look, you guys are the ones who, who rose up against me in idolatry and forgot what I had said. And so he's calling them transgressors. He says, remember what happened long ago. Remember because you turned your hearts from me. Remember because you ignored the covenant. Remember because you started worshiping all these other idols. Remember because you started serving yourself? Remember what happened long ago? You were taken into captivity. That's what he's saying. For I am God and there is no other. And then he says it again. I am God and no one is like me. Folks, that message right there in that little verse 9 right there hasn't changed since before the creation of the earth. God is God. I'm not. And neither are you. Okay? So when I say this is the word of God, pay attention to it. God didn't call me to be an editor. You know, you see government documents in court cases. You see all them blacked out lines. They call that redaction. God didn't call you to redact his word. You don't get to read and go, oh, that feels bad. I think I'll mark that out. Right? I knew a guy that actually tore out pages out of the Bible because he didn't like them. No, I'm sorry, I didn't, do, I didn't do that to him. God says in verse 10, I declare the end from the beginning and from long ago what is not yet done, saying my plan will take place and I will do all my will. See, God's saying, now remember, uh, anybody remember the, I, I, I'm not going to ask because you might not get it. Here you go. God says over and over again, I told you so. I told you so. Keep the covenant, I'll bless you. Obey my commands, I'll bless you. I will be your God, you will be my people. I will be in your midst. I will sit on the mercy seat. I met with Moses face to face. I will sit in the midst of the nation. See, we're in this nation phase, and now we're in the nation phase after the return from captivity, and we're going to make our way through these, through these prophetic books, and we're going to find out that, guess what? They're still transgressors. They still ignore God. Folks, they're no different from us. Look at our world around us. I said this last week and sort of provocatively. If you look at the world around us and you can't see people ignoring the identity of God, the law of God, the expectation of God, 
then you're not paying attention to what's going on. So when we read this, he says, my plan will take place and I will do all my will. Then in verse 11, he tells them, this is, this is the example. I call a bird of prey from the east, a man from my purpose from a far country. So while they were in captivity in Babylon, God raises up Cyrus of Persia to go into Babylon and to defeat the Babylonian Empire, which allows the people of God to leave Babylon to go back to the Promised Land. Cyrus, this, this pagan ruler, emperor of Persia, becomes a tool and a weapon in the hand of God to, 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 to free God's people. He says, I call a bird of prey from the east, a man for my purpose from a far country. Yes, I have spoken. So I will also bring it about. I have planned it. I will also do it. Now, here's the miraculous thing of Isaiah. There are all kinds of theories about Isaiah. It's obvious that the first 35 books of Isaiah are written pre-exile. 36, 37, 38, and 39 are a little history interlude right there about King Hezekiah and the Assyrians coming against Jerusalem and 186,000 soldiers dying mysteriously outside of Jerusalem and Assyria backing off at that point and then Hezekiah gets the promise of another additional year to his life because he humbled himself before God humbled himself before God and then in verse 40 verse chapter 40 not verse 40 chapter 40 begins comfort oh comfort my people so now they're returning from Babylon and God is speaking to them comfort he's saying look guess what i am still the god that always was and everything that i've always said always will be so when i preach a message entitled god said it it is very natural for the first point of that message to be god said it see god has spoken we we, we don't have permission to ignore God. You see? He goes on to say, listen to me. Plain enough right there, huh? Listen to me, you hard-hearted, far removed from justice. One of the prophets, and I don't know if it'll be a passage we'll cover on a Sunday, but he says that, uh, you know, the people are so hard-hearted and far from justice, they say God will do neither good nor evil. The idea that God's not going to judge us. We can act any way we want to. God's not going to judge. We can behave any way we want to. God's not going to judge us. God's not going to do anything. That's God's own people saying that. And yet, we as believers, as the body of Christ in the New Testament, many times we live the same sentiment. Oh, I can act any way I want to. I can, I can, I can just behave. I can, I can make all the wrong choices. I was sitting with a guy yesterday, or standing in his yard talking yesterday. I said, you know what? I don't have any control. Let's see, I'll pick on Lee this morning. I don't have any control over Lee. You know, I can't make Lee, Lee plays guitar. He sits right there. I can't make Lee be righteous. I can't make righteous choices for Lee or anybody in here. I, I can't change Lee. If Lee decides he wants to go out and do something, just blah, I, I can't change that. The only one that I have any control over is me. And the only responsibility that I have before the throne of God is making sure that I make the righteous choices. That I choose to honor God with my life. That my lifestyle exalts God. That, that I obey what God has said. See, God said it and God did it. So I've got a question for you this morning. Stay off of that, okay? Got a question for you this morning. This is like bondage, y'all. I feel like I'm in Babylon. All right. Stay on the gray. Stay on the gray. All right. When people tell you they're going to do something, you believe them? All right, so the only right answer you can give me is it depends. 
It depends on who's saying it. It depends on who they are. It, it, it depends on the character of the person saying what it is they're going to do. Right? I mean, think about it. I mean, I have people all the time. All right, this is the funny one, y'all. <laughs> people say to me, uh, well, preacher, I'm going to get back in church. And I go, all right. Come on. Right? Now, if, 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 if that's what you told me this week, I'm not talking about you. Right? <laughs> but it's always funny to me. Because I'm like, well, come on then. I, I, I'm not, the doors are open. We're here every week. You know, it, it, you, you're not really promising me. Because guess what? If only one of you showed up this morning, I'm going to preach. Right? There's a joke about that, right? Y'all heard the joke about the preacher got there one Sunday morning. It's bad weather. Only one guy showed up. So he got up. He, he preached, man, he preached 30 minutes, 45 minutes. He preached a whole hour. And going out the door, he said, well, he said, I'm so glad you showed up today. And I hope you got something out of the message this morning. And the guy said, preacher, I'm a farmer. And if I go out to the fields with a truckload of hay, and there's only one cow there, I'm not giving him the whole truckload. <laughs> Don't you like that? I thought that that's a great little joke there. But there's a message in that. Right? All right, so, so, so the point of all this is when God says it, God does it. Why? Because who we're listening to is God, and it's the character of God that guarantees the action of God. God said, I said it years ago, and I did it years ago. See? I declare the end from the beginning. In the prophetic message, he's telling them what's going to happen. From long ago, what is not yet done, saying, my plan will take place and I will do all my will. Where's the comfort in that? See, if we were still on last week's message of judgment, man, I could start screaming real loud, right? Here's the point of this week's message. You ready? I am bringing my justice near. It's not far away. And my salvation will not delay. Folks, salvation's coming. That's what he's telling them. This, this, this is a messianic prophecy. This is, this is God saying to his people, my salvation is on the way. I've already said it. I've already planned it. I've already instiga- instituted it. I've already set it in motion. And, and, and I set it in motion back when I told Abraham and Sarah that out of you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Actually, it started before that. Remember at the curse when, when God was speaking to, to Eve? He said, your, uh, your seed will crush his head. See, so the promise of a Messiah, the promise of a Savior, the why is my voice cracking? I don't know. Okay, here you go. Salvation. Do you have it? See? Because the message of God's word is, is that you can. You can have salvation this morning. If you don't know Jesus Christ, guess what? You need to know Jesus Christ because when God says here, my salvation will not delay, I will put salvation in Zion, my splendor in Israel. And folks, he's talking to them through time to the nation returned, but folks, he's talking to us 2,000 years after the fact that salvation was put in Jerusalem. Jesus shows up and shows the people the Father. He shows the people salvation. You know? It's amazing to me, folks, that we live in a time where there's a whole lot of discouragement. I have a pet peeve. Can I share it with you? Sure I can. I walk and run in this community quite regularly. 
walk the bridge a couple times a week, a couple times each time I walk it, you know, and go down the beach road and come back up the beach and all that kind of thing. And I purposed in my heart months and months, maybe years ago, that I'm not going to pass a person, I mean, you know, physically pass a person, not people driving by in the cars because I'm just trying not to get killed. But when I pass somebody, I say to them, good morning. Good morning. You know, cheerful, not good morning. No, I say to them, good morning. Now, sometimes people say something back. You know, but what I've noticed is, and I, I will say it's increasingly so, more and more people aren't responding. You can say, good morning, and they just ignore you. Of course, being a clown, my response to being ignored is, well, maybe not. Probably not the right response, but sometimes it's there. I'm sorry, right? But here's the thing. Even if somebody speaks back, you know what? I rarely run into people smiling. People just are not smiling anymore. And, and, and I look at that, and yesterday I actually did my walk in Wilmington. Y'all know that cross-city trail that goes through the UNCW and goes along Randall Avenue and all down through there and so I did about six miles in Wilmington yesterday and I honestly believe because I, I, I tried not to pay attention to what he was saying but this guy passed me on a bicycle and I went good morning I think he cussed me <laughs> I mean literally I was just like now Bobby if he hadn't been on a bike, I'd have chased him, but I didn't. But folks, we're living in a world where there are a lot of people, and I would almost say the majority of people are just miserable. And they're hurting. And they're scared. And, and they're sad. And there's, no, there's certainly no joy and there's no comfort like Isaiah is trying to give the people of God. And, and, and so who is supposed to speak and deliver and give comfort to a world that's in misery? Well, certainly God has already provided comfort and peace. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. Peace not like the world gives you, but peace that only comes from the Father. Who's communicating that? See, I'm not real good at it, I promise you. If I had to forcibly make the decision to tell people good morning, can I just be honest? It doesn't always come naturally. You know, I mean, I got bad knees now. My back hurts. If I run up a hill, my foot hurts. Good morning. No, it doesn't look right. But folks, we live in a world where people are miserable. And if we, God's people, don't have a reason to have joy and to share that joy, then nobody in the world does. Comfort, comfort my people. Salvation will not delay. I will put salvation in Zion, my splendor in Israel. Now, Isaiah... And, and we'll get to Jeremiah next week. These were guys that God was giving his message to, to proclaim it to the people. And it's not always a promising message. Some of it's judgment. Listen to what Isaiah said in chapter 8. I didn't give this to, who's on the board? I can't even see who's back there this morning. Oh, morning. <laughs> I don't even know who's, who's controlling what y'all see, so here you go. Isaiah 8 says, For this is what the Lord said to me with great power. Now, Isaiah is just telling you his own story right here. For this is what the Lord said to me with great power, to keep me from going the way of this people. That's, that's Isaiah chapter 8, verse 11. 
Isaiah saying, God told me this to keep me from behaving like y'all. Do not call everything a conspiracy that these people say is a conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be terrified. You are to regard only the Lord of armies as holy. Only he should be feared. Only he should be held in awe. He will be a sanctuary. But for the two houses of Israel, he will be a stone to stumble over. Why? Because they disobeyed him. They disregarded him. He will be a stone to stumble over and a rock to trip over and a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Remember, we're back in chapter 8 now. This is judgment chapters. This is God warning them. This is God saying to them, I told you. Many will stumble over these. They will fall and be broken. They will be snared and captured. He tells Isaiah, bind up the testimony. Seal it. Seal up the instruction among my disciples. So many believe that, that the writings he was writing for post-captivity were sealed up until they came back from captivity. I will wait for the Lord who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob. I will wait for him. Here I am with the children the Lord has given me to be signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of armies who dwells on Mount Zion. When they say to you, now listen to this because this is, this is a modern message right here. When they say to you, inquire of the mediums and the spiritists who, and I love this, who chirp and mutter. Shouldn't a people inquire of their God? See, the question is, shouldn't we be paying attention to what God has said? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? Go to God's instruction and testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, there will be no dawn for them I know I said last week was judgment and this week was comfort well here's the comfort if you know Jesus then you know God's peace and if you don't know Jesus then there is no peace because the world has no peace you see I hear God saying in my own heart and mind, I told you. I said it. It's going to be. Don't doubt it. You know? People say, let's meet for coffee. I'll see you at 10. I'm one of those OCD kind of people. I'm there at 5 till. Happens that way. You know, and I'm sitting there at 10 after. Now, I'm a gracious person. I'll give you a little grace. If you're not there by 10 after, I'll still be there. But if you're not there by 12 after, I'm gone. It's the limits of my grace. See, God's gracious. And he keeps extending the message of hope and peace to a people. And I will say to our nation and our culture, he's extending a message of hope. And yet, Many just ignore him. Who are you listening to this morning? God said it. God did it. And he will. And we don't doubt it. Pray with me. God, thank you for today. And God, all that you're accomplishing in our midst. And allowing us to see and hear and know. And, and God, you've already said what our salvation is you've already told us how our salvation will be and and god you've said that that we have this opportunity for abundant life even in this life and so god help us to help us to run to you 
God, help us to ignore the noise of this world. Help us to ignore the, the misery of the world as far as, as it has an impact on us. But God, let us be messengers of hope and messengers of joy and messengers of peace. And let us let, us let others know that the reason for our peace is just Jesus. God, this morning, if there's someone here who doesn't know Jesus, we certainly want them to know Jesus. God, there might be Christians here that, that the noise of the world is a distraction and a hardship to them. And God, I just pray for, for, for the kind of attention that allows us to hear you through the noise. There might be some here that want to be a part of what you're doing here at the gathering. And if so, God, we just, we just welcome that because, God, you're doing some cool things and you let us be a part of it. And, and God, we want everybody that you want here. So, God, help us to respond to you now as we sing. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.